Hey everyone, the 6.5 is on the road here in Las Vegas, Nevada for VMware Explore 2025. Just finished up the general session. We're actually sitting here on the main stage because we have the main keynoter here with me today, President and CEO, Hawk Tan of Broadcom. Joining me to talk about the session, talk about the event. Hawk, welcome back to the 6.5. Glad to be here, Dan. It's so great to have you back. You know, we sat here, you and me and Pat, you know, visible I, Pat, he's right yeah. here. Um, I think it was right after the first keynote, right after you made the acquisition. Right. All that came together, a lot of events that took place and you got on stage, you gave the keynote. And I still remember uh, when you got us started, you, you know, you really kind of made this strong case that private cloud, that enterprises needed to stay on prem. A year later, you doubled down. Uh, congratulations and, and uh, you know, welcome back to, to Vegas here. Thank you, thank you very much, Dan. Glad to be here. So let's just talk about the general session. I mean, first of all, a lot of progress made on VCF 9. Um, you know, you showed a ton of, uh, of additional features. We'll actually talk to Paul Turner later, who was also on the stage. Right. We'll, di we'll dig into the meat, but with you, I just kind of want to get your overall, the big main message that you were really hoping that everyone came away with after seeing this morning's keynote. Well, I think you're right to describe it as we double down. And But that was what we had promised the audience. That, in fact, this is exactly what, when we had a discussion two years ago, the primary reason why we acquired VMware. We see that they have the technology, they just have not put together the platform. With, the, with VCF 9.0, we actually put together from ground up a complete platform. See, last year was still a journey when we took the various components we inherited from VMware, improved it, better interoperability, and stitch it together. And that was VCF 5.2. Today, we moved to VCF 9.0, which while we were pushing VCF 5.2 as a private cloud platform, what we wanted to do ultimately is create from ground up this 9.0, which is available today. So no, it's very exciting times and we prove this is something we could do and we got it done. Well, there's a lot to be done though too, because so many of the customers and you and I have had several conversations over the last year, um, still sticking closely to VMware, even as you've really sort of reiterated how important it is that everyone moves to platform, that the future is not in any one component, it's not just the networking, it's not just security, uh, it's not just virtualization, it's really about the platform. This gives your customers the ability to bring the workloads on-prem, which you saw, what, nine out of 10 of the largest Fortune 500 companies are all working with you. Yeah. Um, the economics are really good. When you bring it as platform, you get better value out of all of it by integrating it all. But I mean, I'd like to hear from your, you know, there's some big advantages that you see um, besides the maths, the economics, which is the one I keep saying. What do you see as those big advantages that you're creating for those customers, those nine out of 10 and more that yeah. are sticking with you? Actually, what we're creating is very simply where the direction of IT infrastructure technology roadmap is headed. It was 25 years ago, VMware came in with this great technology, which is compute virtualization, and created through creating a hypervisor to virtualize the CPU, the compute. And that was great because it was done to literally increase utilization, uh, <clears throat> the, the way application run on CPUs, to increase utilization of the CPU. And, but, over the last 20, 25 years, especially the public cloud showed it, this whole thing about improving utilization has extended beyond that to say that if you can virtualize compute, you might as well virtualize the rest of the hardware components in the data center and create this abstraction layer of software, which in effect applications run on in any kind of hardware sitting in a data center. And that's the uh, roadmap that has progressed over the last 20 years. And, we, and so it's a necessary thing to do. 
The issue is many of, on, of the customers of VMware and anybody else on-prem, when they run their data centers, they have not changed from 20 years ago. And what we're saying is, guys, it's time to modernize. And the cloud, the public cloud guys, just showed the way so loud and clear that they could run it more efficiently, much better, uh, at least from the perspective of developers trying to run new, deploy new apps, is to virtualize your entire data center and create a software-defined data center, what you call platform. It's the path towards moving of what data centers uh, need to become to run high-velocity modern apps. That's it. That's all we're fulfilling. We're fulfilling what is the right roadmap things are going along. But the inflection hawk of AI has actually accelerated this. If companies are going to get serious about building and deploying AI-powered applications, last year you did private AI. Yeah. Uh, this year you came back and you've expanded and continued on offerings. You partnered with NVIDIA, you partnered with Intel and Gaudi 3, you announced AMD today. But not just the actual running on these GPUs, but also all the services, the microservices that have to run around this. I sure. mean, isn't this another really important advantage, inflection, and reason that customers move to platform if they want to get serious about AI? Yeah. It is. It's a great tailwind for, for customers to think hard about adopting VCF as a platform, as a platform for them to keep running, the, to, uh, to you know, modernize the data centers for no other reason than simply the fact that a GPU is just another compute engine from a CPU. And our VCF hypervisor abstraction platform runs both. So as workloads in enterprises progress to running AI workloads, in addition to traditional x86 workloads, it's a natural platform that you pick one VCF and with AI cloud, AI cloud foundation we do deploy, we actually can create, we create scheduler that allows workloads to know where to go to run most uh, optimally whether it's CPUs or GPUs, all on the same platform, on the same, within the same data center. So it's a perfect tailwind towards customers tending to look towards it and saying, yeah, let's adopt VCF 9.0, because we're the only ones available on-prem today that does it. Yeah, well, the customers are, are saying out loud that they want to bring workloads back. There's a number of different reasons. Of course, a lot of the administrators that run these are very familiar with the you know VCF platform, and again, how quickly everyone has to learn how to, to succeed with AI. This this transition, the fact that you've made it platform, and you've kind of said like, look, scale up, scale out. No matter what type yeah. of compute you're using, what kind of applications you're building, do it all here. That that's really important right now because these these the pressure that these IT leaders are under right now to get these out, get apps developed fast, add AI, add you know the capabilities, and by the way, do it without overly spending on right. all of this, it seems that you, you've sort of broken down some of those, those challenges. I, I want to ask you, because you mentioned three friction points. One of your big kind of highlights in the keynote were um, three big points of friction that the enterprises have with, uh, with adoption and moving forward. What are, what, what are those? Share a little of those with the audience. Well, it's a great question. And let's put it in perspective, which I highlighted in, out there. Because the first part of my keynote was, hey, we got this fully integrated tightly knit platform combining uh, compute, networking, and storage all together. So great, you create yourself a software-defined data center. You have the technology. It's about saying, we got the technology working. It's done. It's available. And it shouldn't be a surprise. With Broadcom VMware investing the amount we did over the past two years from a base technology that VMware brought on board, we got it all figured out. So the technology works, but now comes the real practical issue. Deploying new ideas, even as powerful and compelling as v VCF, it has challenges. And the challenges are more organizational and humans. Really is, and those are three friction points. One is developers. Yeah. Developers like to run their own things, do their own test, uh, ops tools. And nowadays they like, for modern apps, they like open source and they run to run containers. 
And that's one big friction. How do you deal with developers if, if you are IT infrastructure? Now, all days, VMware is seen as only supporting virtual machines. Well, with VCF 9.0, there's no reason. It, does, it not only runs virtual machines, it runs containers, mounting containers, just as seamlessly as it runs virtual machines. In other words, it's one single platform now that can run both modern workloads and the legacy virtual machine workloads all in one. So that basically post, uh, enables developers to think about, hey, I can get a path to production of my apps just as fast with VMware as if I have to run off the public cloud. So to be really simple though, it puts IT and developers where they're working more harmoniously. They work together. It's not so much working I would seriously. Say, I would put it even more. It enables IT now to go to the developers and say, I can run your apps at the speed, at the velocity you want it to run. That's even a step further. We enable IT to step up to what the developers truly want. Because in the past, developers had to write a yeah. ticket, sandboxes. 25 days. Yeah, they had their own little sandbox. They do yeah. things over there and then- Now they, they can get it in minutes. Hope that IT could give them production when they need to take a, right. a work. Now they That's can, the sandbox, take it to production seamlessly with IT, no more friction there. Also, you talked big about speed and security because that's another big friction yeah. point. Of course, AI is only creating exponentially more risk too. So no compromise on speed or and speed and security. Yeah. Uh, well, it's VCF, v the VMware Cloud Foundation, especially 9.0 9 features and capability building. But just creating a software-defined data center, a full software common stack abstraction across the entire uh, different hardware, is the, net, is the perfect place to secure your workloads, to secure computing, to secure your workloads in it. Because you can easily build it again in the software platform, uh, micro segmentation. You can create Eastware security, you can build in all kinds of threat hunting, all kinds of tools without having to put in additional agents from third party tools coming in. It's all built in. The protection, the security is almost uh, built in, innate within that platform because it's all software. So that's a natural platform that creates a, a hell of a lot more security than or say you can get from a public cloud. Yeah, and just a double click too, because you sort of talked about this a little bit when you talked about IT and developers, but you also you know, have to really reiterate that part of the reason you've had this long tail, customers have stuck with you, even as you sort of push them to go yeah. faster to VCF, they're still using virtualization services, um, is because legacy uh, IT has not changed as fast as, as, as what you maybe in me are often talking about in terms of the leading edge and what the public cloud you seem to give a path, right? I mean, one of the big friction points that you're solving is you're giving a path to these companies to more quickly get to modern architectures right. without having to completely blow up everything that they've done right. in the past. And while we are, and because while we create this ability through VCF for them to progress up the roadmap to virtualizing their entire data center, you're right, not every company wants to do it or is ready to do it. I, if they want to do it because there's value in them doing it. Whether they are able to get there organizationally, skill-wise, is a different matter. So what we also have is that software stack we have can still give them what they want, which is virtualize different components, virtualize compute in particular, but get that productivity improvements from virtualizing the CPUs, but not be able to get the entire benefit from virtualizing the rest of the data center because they still need to have storage, they still need to have networking, and but if they're not able, skill-wise, or ready to, to deploy it, we give them the choice, and we still offer them the products and the support through a very strong ecosystem of channel resellers and even cloud service providers. So let's wrap this up here and talk a little bit about the audience you had here today. This was a passionate crowd. Uh, try to get up here to the stage to chat to you and I had to wrestle through because the place was pretty packed and yeah. 
um, you know, there was some cheering. There was quite a bit of cheering, which, again, you know, I think the enthusiasm, the excitement, this group, the all very much here. So in this moment, a chance to, to kind of give them that big message. And by the way, all the people that couldn't be here, that big message that you really want them to take away from uh, Explorer 2025. Well, that private cloud is back, is here. And their workloads are coming back from public cloud into private cloud on prem. And we have the platform, we have the technology to make it work very well and do it right this time. That is the key message, that this is a real alternative for enterprises and the practitioners that go with it to actually bring workloads back as an alternative to public cloud. To me, that's the key thing we, we have said all along and we have reached a key milestone. Yeah, and, and, and if I can just add a analyst Q take here at the very end to Hawk is that you really are offering without sacrifice the ability for a company to do all the things that they think they can only do in the public cloud with VMware. And that's what I think is a really strong message is you don't have to compromise, you don't have to sacrifice, you can have all the value. And by the way, the benefits of economics, the control, the things that, you, you know, that a lot of these IT leaders really care about, um, and you're making that possible. So I want to congratulate you on the success. I want to thank you so much for taking a little time to sit down with me here and uh, look forward to doing it again soon. Well, thank you, and thank you, for, thank you for sticking with us as we go through this journey. Yeah, absolutely. It's really exciting times. Yeah, watching closely, not just uh, what you're doing here, but across the entire Broadcom company. Uh, great year. It's been great to watch success both in the market and products and, uh, products and the customers, uh, the success you're having. So more to come. Thank you, Dan. Good to see you again. Good to see you. And thanks. And good to see you as well. We appreciate all of you being here with the 6.5. We are on the road at VMware Explore 2025 in Las Vegas, Nevada. That was a great conversation with President and CEO Hawk Tan. We'll be sure to get back with him again soon to hear more about what he's doing with VMware across the software portfolio and, of course, its semiconductor business. But for this episode, for the 6.5, I got to say goodbye. See you all later. Thank <laughs> you.